How's it going, everyone? I'm Joey Jingola, and I am the founder of fearlesslyquestioning.com. And today we're going to be rolling out a series of videos that compares HubSpot and New Rainmaker, two marketing automation platforms to kind of help you do things better online, go head to head. We're going to have a series of four different videos uh, breaking down these different elements of how to actually do things with inside the platform. Uh, basically, uh, we're going to focus on the conversion process and the overall um, customization that you have, the power, the simplicity that you have within these tools to, to make this stuff happen. So we're going to go from CTAs and forms to landing pages. We're going to go to emails and workflows, autoresponders, and then finally finishing up with the overall uh, editing and customizing of your own site within each platform. So again, this is part of a full review that is on fearlesslyquestioning.com. If you want to go ahead and read the full review, these videos are obviously embedded within there. If you're finding them on YouTube, um, they're, you know, they're designed to kind of exist as their own little standalone comparisons, but the full review uh, is on fearlesslyquestioning.com and you can go ahead and click the description uh, link below that I have for you or nice little annotation here. Click on that and that'll go ahead and get you over to the review. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and hop into the first one here. That is the CTA or calls to action tool uh, or form tool for the most part within New Rainmaker and within HubSpot. So let's go ahead and hop behind the computer. All right, so we're doing a quick comparison here on the CTA portion of the conversion process within New Rainmaker and HubSpot and how they kind of look side by side. So we're gonna start with New Rainmaker and they don't have a dedicated CTA tool per se. Uh, New Rainmaker, Copyblogger, whatever else have you, their kind of theory behind calls to action is fundamentally different than HubSpot's. They like to wrap a form around the CTA and just have all of that take place right there on the page. And really uh, they, I guess, leverage landing pages in a little bit of a different way. It's a little bit of a different strategy. And, and that's one, I think, one of the most interesting things that I've picked up between, you know, comparing the two companies in general, not just the platforms. But, um, you know, whereas HubSpot, they, they kind of want you to create this image for people to click on a button or whatever, and then go to a landing page from there to complete the final action. So, I mean, I prefer, you know, everything taking place, you know, eliminating a step as the way that New Raymaker and Copyblogger does it. But I feel like there's still a, a step or two away from making this ultimately uh, as streamlined as what you might see in, in HubSpot. Uh, so, but to do this, to get to their form um, tool, all you have to do is click on design here and that's going to get you to the forms. And that is again, their, I guess, kind of CTA, if you will, because you're going to be able to add these to your sidebar, uh, to your homepage. And you know, obviously after any type of article or piece of content, blog post, what else have you. And so you're gonna click new here to get to the form. And you have your form settings, your email marketing, and just to take a look at the preview of the form. So now this isn't um, quite as intuitive. So like what we're dealing with here. So the, um, the title here is we're gonna just have a test form that we're gonna be working on. Um, these are, this is going to be your notification, um, that somebody has completed the form. So this is going to be sent to you to let you know that some action has taken place on this form. Uh, so again, this is the test form and this is going to come from your, uh, probably your email. You're going to just send it to yourself. So it'd be Joey at fearlessly questioning and, you know, you can say way to go. And you can say you're amazing. Someone just completed a form. All right, and you're gonna get this. You can obviously specify. You want to specify, you know, what form it was, where it took place, so you know exactly where all this action is happening. And so this is where you can say you are, you're awesome for completing the form. Um, and type in, you know, hey, thanks, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, continue to put in whatever message you want to send them right away. The one nice thing about Rainmaker over HubSpot here is, is they do have this whole membership thing built in, this user registration community focus. And if you want somebody to be logged in to view this form, you can obviously have that. So if you want this to be something that uh, only members see, you can do that. Um, 
and you can see where you have a whole list here of where you want this form to exist uh, stuff here but this one success page so now if you are going to send them to a thank you page of, of thank you for subscribing to your newsletter if it's just a straight newsletter subscription uh, you can you know create that page or if you have some type of offer or library that you're directing them to you can then select so for example if i was doing this form for fearlessly questioning i would want you guys to go to the fearless files library i go ahead and select that once you complete that form then it's going to go ahead and uh, send you right there and so i guess if you wanted to really get fancy there's a there's a, a several different you know use cases that you could have for limiting the submissions um, if you wanted to create a form specifically for i guess like some type of contest or something to where the first you know 50 people or whatever that signed up um, would have access to whatever thing that you wanted to give them uh, kind of fancy so uh, there's a little more functionality here in some of those aspects again this is really just breaking down and the reason that i wanted to compare the two is it's really just the the fundamental difference of the um you know of the of their platforms of their marketing philosophies and they go about it a lot differently as far as uh, what you're going to achieve. So that's it, that's a form settings. And now if you wanna go ahead and hook this up to your mail list, which again, uh, right now, New Raymaker does not have its own email. It does not have its own email tool, which is a little depressing in my mind because I think you know if, if this is going to ultimately compete with HubSpot, like Brian Clark himself said, um, definitely something that needs to be included. And from what I understand, it will be be there down the road. And now we will go into the field settings. So this is where you'll have the opportunity to select whatever you want to show up here. So you can do, keep it very simple. Again, most forms just involve email. Sometimes you can get the first name involved. I like the first name, why? Because if you're signing up to my email list and I'm gonna be sending you communication, I would like to address you by your name. It's that simple. People say it doesn't matter. I don't care. Um, it's just one of those basic human principle things. I'm not just gonna walk up to you on the street and start talking to you or say, hey, if I know you, if I'm asking you for something, there's gonna be a very basic exchange of names. It's that easy. If you don't wanna give me your name, well, that's kind of weird. I mean, it's only the first name, so I'm not gonna be able to run any you know, uh, uh, background checks or anything on you like that. I mean. Uh, I don't, I don't get it. So, but if you don't want to give me your name, then, you know, that's fine. It's again, you know, it's a good, it's a good thing to say that, listen, if somebody doesn't want to give me their name, well, then I probably don't want to do business with them because they don't want to, they don't want to have that relationship. And that's a whole nother, you know, story of talking about, you know, getting through your ideal client. But so you just put your name here. And then if you want to go ahead and grab, uh, where's the email address? And then we go ahead and click email. So we've got email and first name. And what we do here is the label is the first name. You can set how you want it to be aligned. And again, see, this is, I mean, this is some pretty in-depth stuff. And I honestly, uh, input masks, I don't even know what to do with that. Um, and I think that's my biggest problem with this is that they're aiming for this, you know, the, the whole idea was, you know, they want to give you these tools so you don't have to worry about all this stuff and setting it up. And, you know, the idea was they're giving you these templates for the site. So you don't have to worry about site design and all that stuff. And they're giving you these landing page templates and they want to make it easy out of the box. But just a lot of the stuff like this form here, there's just probably a few too many options for somebody um, right out of the gate. If they've never used any sort of software like this, if they've never used the program, uh, it can be a little overwhelming. And really simplifying this a little bit, I think can go a long way. And it's really one of the reasons that, you know, again, I don't think that it's quite ready to compete with HubSpot. So, but once you get this, there are just a few basic things. If you want to actually get it going up and running, you know, again, the label, the positioning of it, um, and, you know, just check these boxes. That's all pretty straightforward. I'm not going to walk you through that. And then again, you have the option to put in some custom CSS. Uh, again, this is stuff, you know, there's no reason for a majority of the people using this to know this. You know, you're probably gonna have somebody that you're gonna hire out for a lot of this uh, and to get set up right, uh, you know, initially. And now you, obviously you can just set up the email and that's it. And we'll save the field settings. So those are saved. And now we're gonna go over to the email marketing. And this is the important part here. When you're creating these forms uh, and they are nice and they're easy to kind of put in uh, for the most part. You're just going to select, I've got MailChimp hooked up. So, and then you'd select, I want my fearless file subscribers and that's it. You just save those form settings and you're good. 
And then if you want to take a look at the form, what we've created, they'll just give you a preview page. So just very simple, very basic first name, email. This is without any sort of styling, anything wrapped around it. And that's what you're getting. So that's the, that's the, that's the downside to this form tool is that you're going to have to have a little bit more knowledge to make it look pretty to fit in. We're going to go ahead and look at HubSpot here. We're, we have two things to compare. We have their CTA and their form tool. And uh, first their CTA you get, this is their dashboard. So you're going to go content and then into their calls to action area here. And this is where all your calls to action live. And there's a ton of information on how your calls to action actually works. Now this is for my family insurance agency, uh, that again, I also work for, and you can see here, it's going to give you everything from views, the percent of views to clicks, how many clicks, uh, the click to submission percentage, how many people have submitted on that, and um, you know, a lot of useful information on if the CTA is working and if you need to do better. So that's just kind of the analytics front. And if you want to do it, you can just to create a CTA, hit that button, um, you click, click here, or first you name it, so this is our test CTA, and you can assign it to campaigns. That's a way, a whole nother video, I don't want to get into that. Um, and then this is where you would include the URL to the landing page that you're sending them to. So again, the button that you're going to have people click on to actually then convert. So a little bit of a different process. It's that different philosophy that they're coming at you with. But to actually design it, it's very simple. Um, you can say new call to action says click here to be awesome. Uh, exclamation point and there's your there's your CTA you can change your color um, pretty much as easy as you want uh, you want an awesome bright yellow no one's gonna stop you it is yours for the taking you can change your font size you can change the padding so let's say we want to take the font size way up and you can go that and the, the, the button is just going to adjust so if we want to you know keep taking it up you can do that. The button is just going to go ahead and get bigger. Um, so you have this option here and then you can uh, select the, the size of it. Um, so you got a lot of different uh, kind of styles to choose from. Uh, some are more ugly than others, but you know, whatever works for you. But if you really want to get fancy and you really want to duplicate what HubSpot does, they give you the option to create your own image and you would just design that in whatever you know uh, program you wanted to use, Photoshop. Uh, even if you like to use Canva, you could probably create some type of you know click here to download our ebook or our 23 awesome things that you need to know about book report whatever. And then you just select your image, uh, upload it, and um, and then it would show up there. And it's really that easy. So you can pick. Uh, let's just say this is an old CTA that I created. Let's say you want to use that. That is your new CTA that overrides. Um, any uh, custom button over here. You would use this image instead and it would again attribute to uh, all those statistics and things like that. So then you just hit create CTA and then you are done and you're good to go. All right, taking a quick look at the forms tool here with HubSpot, we're gonna go to the contacts tab and then click on forms and you're going to see a list of forms populated. Let's hop into uh, a form here. So you wanna create a new form from the top, you, you, you uh, obviously put the name, let's just say test form, and uh, we'll create that. And it's pretty simple here. So you've got your options of first name, last name, email, uh, are the ones that they give you by default. If you want to edit them, you just click the little pencil and then have all sorts of different options here. So the label would, would state email. Uh, if you wanted a different placeholder, you could put that. You can have a help text over the hover uh, and so on. Also, you can just easily delete any of these fields with hitting a little trash can. What's really interesting over here, are these buttons. So right here you have, you know, marking a field as required. So if we want to make first name and email required, then we just do that. Um, but what's even more interesting is this make a smart field. And if we wanted to make this a smart field, then what that means is if somebody has already been on our site and already converted on something, and they've already given us their name, be it first, last, or whatever, we can make these fields disappear when this form shows up again. So they only have to complete stuff that they have not given us, or if we just want them to complete like an email, just to make sure that we're always getting the most up-to-date or recent email. So you always kind of maybe want to leave the email open. 
and there's there's tons of different you know options I can come over here into the form uh, fields and basically anything over here can just be added into um, the form so let's say you want to add city on there you go drop it in uh, job title there you go again as um, as many things as you want um, and you can also edit the type of um, the type of field if it's a single line text if it's a drop down menu uh, if you want it to be a checkbox honestly whatever you want to do but and then obviously deleting them is uh, just as easy as clicking remove here and then you have your options of you know pre-populate fields with known values so if you know some of that information uh, do you want that information pre-populated? So you just go ahead and type in your email here, whoever wants to be notified when the form is completed. So then you save the form and um, you can preview it if you'd like. So there's what the form is gonna look like outside of any additional styling. Um, and then you have the option, option to embed it with the embed code here if you are not uh, plugging in directly to HubSpot. Or you can create a landing page around that or just add this form when you go ahead and create a landing page. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward stuff. All right, so there you have it. That's a really quick look at the CTA slash form tools within the new Rainmaker HubSpot platform. Again, remember this is just video one in a series of four videos that exists within a full written review over at fearlesslyquestioning.com. All the links are below in the description to go ahead and get access to that additional content if you wanna dive deeper on both of these platforms. Also, New Rainmaker and HubSpot offer their own 30-day free trials. So if you are interested in just taking one of these for a spin, whichever one looks like it might work better for you, or even both of them, give them both a shot, um, go ahead. Links also below in the video's description for you to take advantage of that as well. So that's it. I'm going to get out of here. Hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate the time. Take it easy, everyone.